In this video of my series on spark erosion, I take a first look at the properties of said sparks. To do this, I added some more parts to my microscope in order to be able to move the drill and razor blade towards each other with reasonable precision. The two mechanisms work with a preload that can be reduced by a 3mm screw to move the drill forward. The tube with the glass bottom that I glued on for the underwater microscopy acts here as a protection for the lens from metal particles flying around. Prepared in this way, I wanted to check the gap from which a spark can be observed. A value of up to 0.2 or even 0.5mm is often mentioned by people who work with spark erosion whereby such industrial machines operate with voltages well over 100 volts. Let's see what my 30 volts DC voltage will do. The drill bit has a diameter of 1mm, which gives us the scale of the magnification. The 0.1mm thick razor blade on the right side is not aligned with the cutting edge, but with a blunt edge pointing towards the drill. The drill bit is aligned so that a cutting edge points towards the razor blade. As we will see later, this is ideal for bridging a gap. The distance in the initial state is about 0.5mm and no sparks can be seen. If I slowly reduce the distance, we can see that the mechanism for moving the drill is not perfect. The construction wobbles a little and the focus point of the microscope shifts around the tip. At 0.2mm, nothing happens. Even at 0.1mm, no sparks can be seen. Not until the touchdown does the expected flash appear. My experimental setup is therefore not suitable for capturing the gap at which the spark jumps over. Um, didn't I talk about a touchdown of drill and razor blade? Well, let's say it this way, if you could look at the two objects at the atomic level, there would still be a gap to be seen. In a comment on an earlier video of this series, someone used the term spark planar in relation to my machine, and that's a good description. The time resolution of the recording was also rather disappointing. The flash can only be seen in a quarter of a single frame. The frame rate of the microscope camera is simply far too low to capture the spark. However, there remains an upper limit that can be estimated for the process, namely the frame rate of the camera. And with that, we get 17 milliseconds, if the metadata of the video file should be true. So, does my video end at this point due to my poor laboratory equipment? Well, during a sleepless night, I thought about what else I have in my spare box to demonstrate the properties of sparks. And the microscope video sequence wasn't a total failure either, so let's take another look at the result of the first spark. That spark not only melted the metal of the razor blade, but also that of the drill bit. In the previous videos I had already mentioned that sparks work in both directions. The resulting gap between both objects after the spark occurred is about 0.06mm. The edge of the razor blade has been eroded over a length of about 0.5mm. Let's move the drill bit further towards the razor blade. On the second touchdown not even a flash can be seen, but the drill now sticks to the razor blade. Both steel parts are spot welded. The two parts can't be separated by only turning the screw of the adjusting mechanism, I have to help with my little finger.
After realigning the drill, the spot weld appears as a small dent on the edge of the razor blade, with the counterpart at the drill. So let's have another run. This time you can see a flash again and a visible piece of the razor blade is eroded. The previous videos had already shown that one spark is obviously not equal to another one. Shot number 4 leads to the welding of both parts again. And while trying to separate them from each other, shot number 5 occurs accidentally, which spot welds both parts again, this time on the underside of the razor blade. The broken spot weld is clearly visible on the tip of the drill. Shot number 6 also leads to a weld. And the fusion of shot number 7 is so beautiful, that I end the experimental series here. The question as to why the drill bit on my simple EDM machine has to rotate should be answered sufficiently. This brings us to what I found in my spares box, which is a small generator for high voltages in the range of kilovolts. If I approach the two 20mm steel balls connected to the terminals of this generator, sparks appear at the distance of about 6mm. Multiple channels of purple glowing plasma form between the two poles. I won't talk about the physical processes behind plasma forming in this video, but examine a few basic properties of these sparks. The first point of these properties is the random element. There is no single stable plasma channel formed between the closest points of the two steel spheres. Instead, the sparks constantly move around on the surface. So let's change the diameter of the steel balls to just 5mm. Now sparks jump over at a distance of 24mm. If the distance is further reduced, the sparks jump over at a faster rate. With a distance of only 12mm, a stable plasma channel forms between the balls, which continues to move around the surfaces. After replacing the balls with sharpened wires, even a gap of 35mm can be bridged. Conversely, this means that the spark is more likely to jump to an area with a sharp edge than to an area with a larger radius. Here the plasma favors to form between the right steel ball and the left wire tip, also the gap to the second steel ball is only about half as large. What is striking is that neither the steel balls nor the wire melt and there are no craters to be seen as in the experiments with the razor blade. Well. Obviously, the electrical power of these sparks is too small or spread over a too large volume. Let's measure, or rather estimate the electrical resistance of the plasma. 
The voltage is the unknown variable in the circuit because I don't own a multi kilovolt voltmeter. To measure the current I put a 10 ohms resistor in the circuit. With a voltage drop of 0.07V, this results in a current of 7mA at an electrode spacing of 5mm. If you bring the wire tips closer together, the current increases. If the distance is brought back to 5mm and the current sensor is replaced by a 20 ohms resistor, 0.13V can be read, which is also equivalent to about 7mA. With the 100 ohms resistor we get about the same current... ...which doesn't really change even with a 1000 ohms resistor. Consequently, assuming that the high voltage generator delivers a constant output voltage, the resistance of the plasma must be significantly higher. So let's narrow the resistance value from the top range by putting a 1 mega ohm resistor in parallel to the plasma. No change can be seen, consequently the resistance of the plasma must be significantly lower. Even with the 500 kilo ohm resistor in parallel, the plasma arc is maintained. However, the 240 kilo ohms resistor interrupts the plasma and emits magical blue smoke. The resistance of the 5mm long plasma arc must therefore be in the range of 200 kilo ohms. Yes, I know the two experiments only allow a very rough estimate of the actual resistance, since the voltage source really does not deliver DC voltage free of any impedance, but I don't want to discuss that at this point. Let's note that the resistance of the gap between the electrodes decreases significantly with the appearance of a spark, but it does not become zero. If the distance is reduced to about 1mm, a new 240 kilo ohms resistor can be connected in parallel without any problems. Now a 100 kilo ohms resistor emits smoke in the experiment. Obviously, the smaller the spark gap, the lower the resistance of the plasma and as seen under the microscope, the distance bridged by the sparks in my EDM machine is very small. As the next experiment, let's attach two thin wires to the terminals of the high voltage generator and turn on the power. Now it can actually be observed that the wire tip to the right, which is connected to ground, begins to glow and melts. At a distance of about 10mm, the gap remains constant. A ball of molten and re-solidified metal has formed at the tip of the right wire. In a previous experiment we saw that the current flow decreases as the distance traversed by the plasma increases. The longer the distance, the lower the electrical power that drops across the spark gap, because the power drop is proportionally to the current, considering the voltage to be constant. The energy of the plasma is also distributed over a larger volume, which means that more energy is released into the surrounding air and therefore less into the wire ends. Furthermore, the energy absorbed by the thick drop of metal spreads over a larger volume, which also prevents more metal from melting. This can be demonstrated by cutting the drop and realigning the space between the wires to 10mm. If the power is switched on, the right wire continues to melt until the process ends again at a slightly larger distance of now 12mm. Only the wire to the right is glowing and only at the tip, so the current flow cannot be the sole cause of the heating of the metal. 
no melting is observed on the wire connected to the positive pole. The sparks work in both directions, but not to the same extent. There will be a lot more to tell about the why in later videos, but for now let's just keep the effect as such in mind. As a last experiment, I bring a metal particle in the form of an M3 nut between the two 20mm steel ball electrodes. Now, sparks jump over at a distance of more than 10mm without the nut touching one of the two electrodes. The simulated metal particle expands the maximum possible spark gap by the diameter of the nut. Impurities therefore play a considerable role in the processes of spark erosion. Now that we've learned about the core properties of sparks, the next video gives a first look at the electronics that control the plasma energy, but I need to order a few parts first. If you would like to spend me a few bucks for this and for the many hours of work that I put in this video series, there is a donate button on Homo Fazians, thanks to all the great people who have already made use of it. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.